city ulani ni na apa makaya ikamala mdi muhawo ni mpele na mkele kile apa gumone express where we give you all the latest headlines and news nje mwaba sipioza imini yetu ya lapa mzant afrika apa si city corner it is heritage day and you are watching galaxy universal network channel 500 on star set and the name is harmony mpele yena ozala kwa pele kulo nonta ando tlambulu langa loglunga obi tobi gazo sompi sonda bezi cha Kanjalo, Jess Genaguzo, Zona Indabaze, to Esma Legle. These are latest news and headlines. Police arrested one suspect while five others died in a shootout during a cash and transit robbery near Springs. SA's largest federation, NUMSA, takes to the streets in anger over alleged human rights violation in Zimbabwe. Jacob Zuma Foundation heavily criticizes the Deputy Chief Justice Raymond Zondo. And in our international stories, two cops left wounded in America following a grand jury's decision not to charge cops uh, in the killing of the unarmed Breonna Taylor. And in our Heritage Special, we have National Youth Ambassador Nosi Pohani and musical legend in the making, Costa Titch, joining us in studio, talking about heritage and the youth today. And as we've always said, we bring you all the latest news, the headlines, and we would like to talk all things heritage, but the news are always worthy. So here is your first story. Five suspects were fatally wounded by police during a cash and transit robbery in Dawn Park near Springs, while two others have been arrested. According to the police, the incident happened on Wednesday morning. Police have revealed that some of the stolen money was recovered while four firearms with ammunition and three vehicles suspected to be stolen have been seized by the police. Police said a CIT robbery was, commi uh, was committed at the, Glen the Glenhead Road in Dawn Park around 8 a.m. yesterday morning where an unknown number of suspects uh, robbed security guards and undisclosed amount of money before fleeing the scene, leaving one of the vehicles ablaze. <laughs> Heist in Don Park. Yeah. Stealing here. Yeah. It's a robbery, robbery, Don Park. Robbery in Don Park. Robbery in Don Park. Oh. Hey, there are too much men. Wait, wait, man. Heist in Don Park. Yeah. Stealing here. Yeah. It's a robbery, robbery, Don Park. Robbery in Don Park. Robbery in Don Park. Oh. Yes, in transit. Don Park. Yes, yes. And uh, the CD Bank technical response team and the Kuruleni SWAT team followed up in, on, on intelligence which led them to the Klip Porki on Carroll Avenue. On arrival at the identified safe house, a shootout ensured between the suspects and the police. Five suspects were shot dead while two others were arrested. The police, uh, uh, the, the police rather, uh, the, the, the police uh, volunteer rather was also one also that was arrested for his alleged role in the cash heist in uh, Boxburg Dawn Park. As we continue with the stories, the National Union Mental Workers of South Africa says that they will not fold their arms and turn a blind eye on Zimbabwe as it uh, goes through under the rule of President Mnangao as he continues uh, to make sure that there is rebels in the country. These remarks and sentiments were shared during NUMSA's demonstrations on Wednesday outside the embassy in Pretoria, demanding an immediate end to alleged human rights violations in the country. The demonstrators also alongside uh, with NUMSA and other right, uh, rights organizations were lobbying for the African Union, chaired by South Africa, to investigate human rights abuse by Mnangao and the ruling ZANU-PF. The whole world, especially the world of the working class, stood with us and gave us their solidarity during the dark days of the struggle for freedom. I am going to the demands. I am going to the demand. Here are our demands. We demand the following. Evidence is mounting of systematic brutality of violence meted out to Zimbabwean ordinary people who do not support ZANU-PF and President Emerson Mnagwaka. We demand that the AU must deal with this matter as a matter of agency and set up a task team to investigate violations or human rights violation abuses under the reign of ZANU-PF and Munangaga in particular. Two, 
We say, should the investigation find that there is a case to answer, Monagwara must be arrested, and he and his entire cabinet and ministers must be charged for violation, for human rights violation. And they must be trialed, and they must be sent to jail. I don't know if they will, sus they will success succeed or survive in jail because they seem to have few bars left somewhere. <laughs> we demand an independent judiciary in Zimbabwe. Lawyers and advocates who can be able to operate independently in that count. We demand that all members of judiciary, whether judges, lawyers, advocates, must act in the interest of justice, and they must stop being legis of the current regime. And we just uh, witnessed Andrew Peary, the president of NUMSA, speaking about what right, um, the rights that uh, the Zimbabwean people have within their country. And we continue further on to hear what, had, what he had to say, rather. They, also, they are also demanding that if investigations find a case to answer that Zimbabwean head of state who troubled former late ruler Robert Mugabe in a, a, in a military coup be arrested and prosecuted alongside with his entire cabinet. Thirdly, NUMSA is also demanding that the, uh, the judiciary should also have an independent uh, investigation and stop being what they label as lackeys as in the current regime. Awe musho wa mna ngwaga uwe. Awe. It's clear comrades mna ngwaga is tired. And that's the problem of African continent. That old tired men who are close to pension and their graves are given serious responsibility <laughs> to rule the country. And they are not susceptible to any new fresh ideas. They are not willing to listen. They are not ready for change comrades. They will rather kill us than accepting that it is time for change. As we continue and give you guys all the latest news and headlines, and it's still Heritage Month, and we cannot celebrate Heritage Month without the leading top stories. As we continue, on Wednesday, the K-9 unit and crime intelligence arrested two males and confiscate, uh, confiscated Dacha in seven mines in the, in the Kruman area, estimated street value of 107,000 rand, and Maruba valued at, uh, valued at 2.9 million. Meanwhile, speaking on the matter of Dacha seized by the police minister, Begitael had this to say following the multidisciplinary um, operation conducted by the city of Ekuruleni. And let us take a look at what he had to say. Uh, I haven't seen so much Dacha. Uh, I'm sure those people are making a lot of money, but as you have made all the stolen cars, firearm, uh, um, uh, police, they even find excess Dacha outside the hostel that people will throw it out of the windows and the canine guys they find the, the extra so what, what I think is most important, Mama Zibu, Faith and myself, we have agreed to go back in the hostel and speak with the Ibuna in terms of speaking to uh, the town to fight back. They raise it that they've got two serious crimes there. It's murder and the abuse uh, of, of women. I think it's important that I can as we all know, Peggy Kael is one prominent minister that is always on the ground, making sure that he's visible, that he serves to protect the country. As we continue, moving along to our next story. And uh, President, uh, the former President uh, Jacob Zuma Foundation has heavily criticized the, the Chairperson of State Capture Commission Chair Deputy Chief uh, Justice Zondo, saying that his, uh, his media, that his media uh, conference was uh, uh, digested by humiliating uh, the former president. In a strongly worded statement on Wednesday, the foundation expressed its disappointments at Zondo's obsession with the Zuma and accused him of being biased. This followed Zuma's no-show at the commission on Monday after he was scheduled to appear. 
The Deputy Chief Justice set down the 16th and the 20th of November for the former statesman to appear at the commission. And he warned that, uh, that these dates were not up for negotiation. As we continue with the all things to do with headlines, stories, and what is what in the country, we take this quick commercial air break and still continue celebrating Heritage Month. Talk brought to you by Tamani Technologies and Systems. Tamani Technologies and Systems takes leadership in fourth industrial revolution. The whole world is facing a transformation. The revolution will be developed into the following stages. Digitization, cyber security, internet of things, managed services, document management, and business applications. We provide business transformation and ICT solutions with presence in 13 African countries and two European countries. We are your leading partner in integrated platform providers, innovation leaders, standalone products, and innovation pace setters. Tamani Technologies and Systems, delivering value across continents. Challenge your ordinary. Experience the extraordinary. Not only the government, the municipality here has had no plan. Now I believe that my peace is my most valuable asset. Absolutely beautiful! Ah, this is exactly what I was looking for! Camping, camping, camping! DJ Khaled! It is a to celebrate. We're ready for action. I like it when it's nice and soft. Yeah, that yeah. is nice. How was it like growing up in Nigeria? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know what it is. Feeling is there that, you know, you're doing something special. Stop being so dramatic, Mira. You should just be what you want to be. Experience the extraordinary with Starset. Hello. The fourth industrial technology era has forcefully changed how every profession has been working for its clients. The world has become smaller than what we used to think. Imagine the ease of talking to a person who is in Australia, China or Germany while you are in South Africa as if you're just next door. The ease that globalization and the fourth industrial technology have brought to humanity entail doing business anywhere in the world as long as you have the purpose and the means. It is our expertise as MB Chabong Incorporated to advise clients immigrating to South Africa on various permits and on opportunities for travelers who intend to sojourn in South Africa. Hello. The fourth industrial technology era has forcefully changed how every profession has been working for its clients. The world has become smaller than what we used to think. Imagine the ease of talking to a person who is in Australia, China or Germany while you are in South Africa as if you're just next door. The ease that globalization and the fourth industrial technology have brought to humanity entail doing business anywhere in the world as long as you have the purpose and the means. It is our expertise as MB Chabong Incorporated to advise clients immigrating to South Africa on various permits and on opportunities for travelers who intend to sojourn in South Africa for a longer period of time. I not the Incorporated, Incorporated.
God is so amazing. Feel the heat. The Bible says that through his death on the cross, we are now reconciled with our Father. Forgive and you shall be forgiven. So wherever God takes us, we're just excited about it. As a child of God, where you are, you must have an hour of prayer. Feel the excitement. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> I believe that God is working right now. Feel the heat. And welcome back from the ad break. You're still watching uh, The Morning Express, where we give you all latest news and headlines. But we are still celebrating Heritage Month and always for that special feature that we always have on the show. We bring you amazing, vibrant young people. And we have the National Youth Ambassador. Today joining us, Uno Sipoani and a musical legend in the making, Costa Titch. I hope I said that right. <laughs> joining us today in Studio more on our heritage and all things to do with young people. So the question is, do young people really celebrate heritage? That's what we're going to get into. Okay. But before that, how are you guys doing? I'm well, thank you. How are you? I'm fantastic. Oh, you're so lovely. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Club of McMillan didn't do the Tetan Angus toss. No. Then when he was a translator, like that. But uh, take me through, um, mm. respectively, what you guys do and what okay. is it so significant about it today during Heritage Month? Sure. Okay, so basically, as the youth ambassador, it's also my duty to make sure that as young people, we know who we are and we know where we come from. Mm. So we actually shot a documentary explaining heritage and we went to an orphanage um, where I felt there's mixed cultures in one place and mm. people may not know fully about their heritage. Mm. And to my surprise, they actually knew a lot about their heritage. Yeah. Um, however, as you go up, you know, it, let's say the 20 year olds mm -hmm. um they don't really take their heritage and culture too seriously as opposed to the adults do mm -hmm. so um we need to verify this we need to check why is that the case because yeah. we need to know where we're from in order mm -hmm. to know where we're going mm -hmm. yeah I'm sure thing. beautiful sentiments yeah. yeah um well, allow us uh, to check out what uh, Unosipan is talking about because there is uh, a special video that she brought along with herself as we take a look at it. The beauty of South Africa is stretched across the smiles of friendly faces that shine on the mosaic cultures and traditions. Our heritage gracefully spans across our country with rays of Ubuntu. Ubuntu is an African word that means humanity. The values of Ubuntu are acceptance, consideration, appreciation, listening, affection, and love. We just uh, experienced rather or watched a video that you were talking about where young people get to be surveyed and get to be asked about what is heritage and at the orphanage that you're at. But before we get into our conversation, the conversation that is very important, sure. Twitch. Teach. Or Titch. <laughs> I think it's going to be Twitch and Titch because it's all about it. But take yeah. me through music. Do you, sure. do you find sentiments in heritage in music? Definitely. I mean, you know, um, music also is based, is like it becomes like a whole cultural thing, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why if people come from overseas to like South Africa, they will hear South African music. You know, yeah. it'll feel different for them. You know, even the hip hop we make this side is not the same hip hop that's made in America. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, so it definitely plays a huge role, you know. I love that you mentioned that because I think mm -hmm. we're looking at heritage, culture, and the texture of our music in South Africa, yeah. and we are always comparing hip hop mm -hmm. to always to the States. Or yeah. 
yeah, preparing yeah. it. Child, they are making music. Mm -hmm, would you say mm -hmm. that we found our sound as South Africans? And how would yeah. you describe that sound? Definitely. I mean, you know, I think it's just actually, if anything, I think it comes into the subject matter. Mm -hmm. You know, it's um, as an artist, it's about talking about things that you know your audience will relate to. Mm -hmm. You know, so things that happen in South Africa. You know, if you speak about those type of things, then it will relate more to South Africans, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Yeah, you know, so I can't go and speak about the Bronx. You know, that's <laughs> that's overseas. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Um, and and that's exactly what it is. So if I speak about Josie and the experiences that I've had this side, mm -hmm. you know, there was a lot of other people that might have had the same experience you know oh wow, cool but uh, take me through the sound take me through mm -hmm. the sound that you, you identify with as hip-hop yeah. in south africa because i always find that the conversation with music has always been yeah. the degrees of comparison has always oh, been that yeah. this artist is trying to sound like mm -hmm, this artist mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we can never say that here's yeah. an artist in south africa young brilliant talented yeah. and is amazing in his own right but yeah. we always want to find that oh, but mm -hmm. he has qualities of he has yeah. that oh. instead of just letting them be you, you know what it really is actually Actually, is that um, basically so hip hop is obviously originally from the states, the right? States, yeah. So with us, right, we have like house music. Mm -hmm. Okay, so house music is like it's pure, it's authentic, it's it's from here, mm -hmm. you know. So what I like to do, which is what a lot of artists are doing, but it's not it's not a thing yet. Yes. If that makes sense. Yeah, it does. That's why you have <laughs> that same debate as to like comparisons mm -hmm. and whatnot, you know. But um, what we like to do is we like to take melodies that are within like house music mm -hmm. and and bring that to hip-hop you know what mm. I mean and that way the hip-hop just has more of a feel that it feels like it's from here you yeah know I mean? it has a yeah. dance feel to it yeah. that a lot of people can yeah. can resemble with well uh, take me through something no Sipo, that yeah. we have to speak about music uh -huh. what song resembles something to you that says I'm African I am here within the soil and I'm the daughter of the soil sure <laughs> now you want to put me in trouble on the spot <laughs> on song. the spot um for me, it's um, Lady Smith Black Mamba, so anything by them mm. reminds me of home, reminds me of Africa because of the a cappella yes. that they do, you know. Um, they, you know, they create sounds, wait, so they make um, musical sounds. Mm. Their harmonies parts. always flow. Exactly. So for me, that just symbolizes Africa. Um, mm. I can see the, you know, the rising sun whenever mm. I hear their music. But also, um, Costa, Costa's mm. music as well. What I love about Costa's music is, he combines different cultures mm. within one song and that's the answer that we need today in South Africa we need a person who's going to bring us all together, together. and say that mm. you know what this is who we are today mm. so for me Costa is really really doing it right now thank oh, you wow. I mean, appreciate that thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that is a, 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 an endorsement I think um, that a lot of young people are going to take it and take a look at it and say that actually music is that one thing that brings us together yeah. and it, it, it brings in Ubuntu and uh, mm. In, in a sense but take me through what you do I think that there, there, there's something very underrated about what both of you guys do I mean sure. there's music and they think it's easy yeah. coming up with beats producing getting yeah. in studio they think it's, it's a walk in the park <laughs> getting on stage they also think it's a walk in the park yeah. but take me through what culture because I want to stem our entire conversation through culture mm -hmm. there's a culture through everything that we do sure. and there's a root in, in everything that sure. we've done mm -hmm. and what has that been within your music Yo, like definitely it started within dancing, mm. you know, so I was a hip hop dancer before I started making music and that, the training, learning how to hold a crowd, right? You must understand when you have a mic, you grab attention, okay? But now if some music is playing and you have to use your body to gra grab attention, that is a whole different ball game, you know? So if anything, I would say the, the just learning that art and going through the experiences of being in the dance industry mm. and all of that, combined with learning the art of making music itself, learning the art of having to treat it as a business at the same time you know because we're independent you know yeah. we're not signed to a record label so we literally it's just me and my friends and we like guys how are we gonna make this work mm -hmm. you know so we setting up proper business how are we gonna make it work yeah. you know what I mean and if anything I just say like how can I put it man it's there's a lot of aspects that the public doesn't see yeah. they always get the end result yeah you know it's like <laughs> last night I was like if someone asked me how are you I'm gonna say I am album because oh, that's wow. how tired I am working on the <laughs> album. album. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Because we have so many different aspects that play at part, mm. you know, and 
I mean, I guess that's what makes music such a beautiful thing, you know, yeah. when you see people singing it and having mm -hmm. fun and dancing, you know, yeah. to see that all the hard work put in behind the scenes pays off, pays off, mm -hmm. you know. Well, a little yeah. birdie told me quickly mm -hmm. that um, you won a dance competition yeah. and you winning that dance competition, th mm -hmm. did that bring in the acclaimed fame or the acclaimed uh, prospects of you entering within music? No, not necessarily. Um, I, I did a lot of dance competitions, you know. <laughs> but the one um, on the other channel, rather, yeah. where where you mm -hmm. won um, on on the other channel, it was broadcasted live. Oh snap! Okay, I think I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I think I know what you're talking about. But I think I think with the music, it was more when I was um, backup dancing for Casper mm -hmm. That's when my like the vision of music came to light because yes. I was able to actually experience and see what a real artist goes mm -hmm. through, you know. And I'd realized that since a kid, I was always envisioning the artist, not actually yeah. the dancer. I didn't know that, you know. And luckily, the journey just fell into place. You oh, know? Wow! Yeah. I mean, talking about things falling into place, Nasipo, take me through your advocacy for young people your advocacy where did that stem from I mean a lot of people would say it's because of her family li lineage yeah. the power within her family yeah. but you as a person your own, you're your own person you yeah. mm -hmm. stood up and said this is what I want to do mm -hmm. sure thing people have come before me but there is something that I want to stand for too where did that all begin sure um, you know it is who I am as you're saying mm. um, you know growing up my mom you know she helped whoever came across her mm. way and so watching that growing up um, it kind of came into me and also I was in a Catholic school so you know practicing the Catholic religion yes. as in going out in the streets feeding the poor um, so that was an actual extramural activity yes um, you see so that, <laughs> that built um, you know philanthropy within mm. me and also as growing up i um, learning more about who I am as before being a honey ukumalo you know the zulu um culture i learned about it and i saw that wow you know zulu people are so brave yes and i was like wow maybe i can also be that brave, brave yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then um i found out said no i'm also a honey i'm like whoa this That's is bravery in me <laughs> so i was like no this is my duty mm. then this is something that i have to take up and yeah that's basically so it was written all in the stars before you even found out that you're you a honey it was written in the stars <laughs> that this one it was in your blood yeah but i think the greatest one is would your grandfather mm -hmm. be proud of the South Africa we live in today? Would he celebrate what we deem to be Bride Day instead of Heritage Day yeah. to be what we should be celebrating? And I can tell you what my grandfather would be proud of, um, the young people. Mm. Um, you know, with, as young people, we faced with so many obstacles, so many barriers in terms of leading us into the next step and the yes. next stage of our lives. Um, and we're not given that, you mm. know, what they fought for. But I think he'd look at us as young people and say, you know what, you guys still have that energy to carry on the battle that we started. Mm. And, you know, for me, Maybe we don't have the perfect South Africa that we yeah. wish to have, but there is a difference, you know, mm. that we can talk now, we can talk freely, and it's up to us now mm. what we do with that freedom, that bit of freedom that they gave to us. Oh, mm. freedom is what I'm taking away from mm. what you are saying. Yeah. And I guess you had the power and freedom to remix mm. in Kalagat. Yeah, it was a risk. <laughs> it was a risk. Yeah. I, I won't lie. I, before we dropped the, the song, I said, this is going to go one of two ways. It's either people are going to love south. this <laughs> or people are going to hate me, you know? Yeah, and, yeah. And luckily it went the other way. And the know? success, <laughs> and the, take me through that. I mean, that's one of you the know, biggest songs that people mm, sing, irrespective yeah. of how old it is. It still has mm. that 2020 feel to it. That's the thing. Because, you know, my... As an upcoming artist, you, know, you often look at the bigger artists and you're like, how are they there, right? Mm. And then you see that the bigger artists are actually like remixing stuff from the past, yeah. you know? So it's like, why can't we do that as well? You know what I mean? So I, that's why I took the risk and tried that, you know? And honestly speaking, life-changing experience. Mm. You know, I'm super grateful, you know, the likes of Ricky Rick um, yeah. mentoring me and giving me advice. You know, it's just... It's 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 a dream come true. Yeah. You know what I mean? And to just describe like how can I put it the the process, you know, mm -hmm. it's literally been a process of learning, you mm -hmm. know. Um, every little failure that's happened, it's like, okay, that's how we're gonna better it and that's mm -hmm. how we're gonna move forward. You know, but for me the thing that makes it so special the most is is truly seeing that, you know, I have a fan base that celebrates the fact that, you know, we we're so diverse and unique, you know. Um mm -hmm. if you had 
maybe gone maybe 10 years ago 20 years ago like it would have wouldn't work out the same way if a white yeah. person was you know rapping in vernac you know mm. so honestly i'm just grateful for the experience and i'm just happy yeah. to be where i am you know? <laughs> take me through tembi tembi yeah yes Tembi is actually a funny one. <laughs> um, I laugh about it. <laughs> oh my gosh. There was this girl on social media. I won't mention her yeah. name. Um, and she she was basically bashing me. And, mm. and, and thing is, she's also an influencer, right? Oof. So, so you know, sometimes when you get bashed by people that, that don't have influence, you're like, ah, mm. maybe you're just hating, you know? Yeah, yeah. But and I don't even understand the work you're putting in exactly, with your collaboration you know I mean? with and, and the thing about this girl is she's bashing me on social media and whatnot. And I'm like, really? Like, I'm tired of this. Mm. You know, I'm really tired of this. Why why can't you see how many other people are looking at the, the, the beautiful side of this? Mm. You know what I mean? And that really just inspired the song. You know, we went into studio literally after that happened. And what? I was like, yo, man, I need to talk about I need to talk about this. Yeah. And funny enough, that's the song we made, you know? And and, and how's the success with that song been? It's been amazing. Yeah. Tonight, funny enough, we're dropping <laughs> the music video, you know? So um, Tonight with Poiti? Yeah. We're dropping the music oh, yeah, video that's tonight, yeah. yeah. Exclusive <laughs> so, right here. Yeah. Exclusive <laughs> right here. <laughs> you know, so it's, um, man, like I say, I, the only, I, like, I like to say that right now I'm living with God in me, yeah. if that makes sense, because every single day I'm being surprised by newer opportunities mm. that are just falling into the path the stars are aligning and it's it's yeah it is, it is what it is <laughs> well allow us to take this quick commercial air break and we'll back after this when we discuss all things insecurities all things young people all things the future and dreams right here on morning express we'll be back after this The beauty of South Africa is stretched across the smiles of friendly faces that shine on the mosaic cultures and traditions. Our heritage gracefully spans across our country with rays of Ubuntu. Ubuntu is an African word that means humanity. Values of Ubuntu are acceptance, consideration, appreciation, listening, affection, and love. Well, welcome back from the ad break and you are still watching uh, Morning Express with myself, Homie Bele. Our heritage is special. Joba ni bonaji na mkanda siya bungaza. Siti amgelegani apa emzant Africa. Apa sin patela yonge indo e e e e tibene. Nongba si zazi, si zichuwa, si suka api singa bandu tinanje. God, I'm so joined by Titch and Onosipo uh, Anuel. I'd, I'd rather say lady and gent. Right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> sure. Respectively. And it started wrong. It was lady and gent and, you know. But... Um, <laughs> Take me through, I think, there's a lot of things that we go through as young people. And I think today it's very powerful that we get to advocate for those young people, that we yeah. get to advocate mm -hmm. for those that are looking up to you, Titch, and, so, and sure. say that there's a career in music, and it's not sure. just fame, it's not just money, sure. it's not just bling, it's not just cars, mm -hmm. but there's something you have to respect about that. Yeah. The same thing with your advocacy. A lot of people look at you and they look at you and they say, it stems from her surname. Mm -hmm. What more can she bring? What yeah. more can she mm -hmm. give to us? But take me through your insecurities before the platforms that you both are on at this point mm. so for me um growing up actually i hated public speaking hated um, is a big word yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for that's someone. actually how i felt <laughs> it was always like oh can't you start from the bottom of the class list mm. not from the top um because it really really was a nerve-wracking experience for me and surprisingly i don't know when it started that I could speak in front of a large crowd. Mm. Um, I can't pinpoint the dates, but I could just 
when when I know I have to do something and I don't have an mm. another option, I have to do it. I'll go out and do it, no matter how it's going to make me feel. Mm -hmm. So even if I'm a going, I'm going to address a large crowd. I'll still shake behind the as always behind the curtains, <laughs> mm -hmm. but I'll go out there and execute it mm. because that's what I have to do. And if I don't do it, who are the younger um, kids going to look at? Mm. And who are they going? Who's going to be their form of inspiration? Mm. You know. So it's all about doing it not only for myself but the kid that's sitting there mm. you know she maybe is dealing with the same thing having anxiety um, but now if she sees that okay no she could do it then why can't I mm. so that's sure. what I always try um, instill Ooh. in the thing young people as presidency to recupera presidency presidency <laughs> award you should come be recognized because <laughs> I think we young people have a lot of truth mm. a lot of um, stories to tell that yeah. I think older people look at and they think it's not a story. Mm -hmm. They look at it and I think even you as an artist, they look at how yeah. you dressed, how your confidence oars out. It's, it's mm -hmm. just that cup that keeps on overflowing. For Check sure. me through your insecurities if yeah. you had any um, before you got to the platform that you're on. I mean, you must understand as, a, as an artist that makes music, your career is validated off of people's opinion. Mm -hmm. You understand? So like you can make the best song in the world, but if no one listens to it, you're not going to be successful. Do you understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's and that's where the the issue is with when it comes to like the insecurities with the music because you can make so much music yeah. and you know you can like try and make it the best product possible, mm -hmm. but but there's always the insecurity is on are the people going to love it? Yeah. Do you get what I mean? So that's where where it kind of like. It, it really always boils down to, you know, I feel like it's it's literally like flipping a coin every time because it's like, you know that you make good music, yeah. but you know, times change, you know, if you drop a song at the wrong time. I remember the one time I was getting called out for releasing a song on social media the day that um, the kid was shot in Eldorado Park. Oh yeah, yeah, Nathalie and Julius. Yeah, and it was like, you know, I didn't wake up expecting someone Said, to get yeah. shot, you know what I mean? And, and they don't understand that we plan our release yeah. Since, uh, you know what I mean? date, market, everything you know, else so that, you know what that I mean? people downloading the song. You know, I mean, obviously we shed light on, on what's happening, but it's like, you know, that's where the insecurities lies because mm. it's like, I feel like um, as the, the supporters, they, they always turn straight to the artist. Like, mm. you're not supporting the movement or, you know, you're not yeah. saying anything or whatever. And it's like, but guys, even putting it on a pause <laughs> is going to affect your production you know at the end of the I day. Mean? It's going to affect your mm -hmm. artistry. But take me through you. Mm -hmm in Zulu. Yeah. Ah, guys, let me say that again. You, I, I said in Zulu. <laughs> you rapping in Zulu. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, and I say this a lot of the time, all right, for me to record a song in English, all mm -hmm. right, is the easiest thing, okay? For me to record a song in Zulu, yeah, is probably if not five or ten times longer in the mm. process you know because i sit with my boys um phantom and nelson they help me write and mm. translate you know mm. because you know i don't understand zulu 100 percent. you mm. know what i mean so they'll sit there and they'll make me say one line for the whole song <laughs> And they're just teaching me. No, you have yeah, to pronounce, pronounce it, it correct. Mm. You know, because it, it's it would it would be very disrespectful for me yeah. to to rap in another language and say it incorrectly. Yeah. You know, so the process is so much longer. It's so much more challenging. Mm. But for me, what I love the most about it is the fact that I'm learning. Mm. You know what I mean? That that for me is like the golden, the golden part of it. Mm. You know, is for every single song that we make, I'm learning more and more and more. You know. Shucks. In Zulu, yeah. an entire Zulu language. Yeah, <laughs> Hi, that is that is that is beautiful. Take me through Plug City Hype. Um, mm -hmm. What 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 that initiative started? What has it been doing for your career too? Plug City, Plug City Hi. Hype is um, an entertainment mm -hmm. company that I and my partner co-founded. So basically, what we do is we look into artists mm -hmm. and we help artists basically achieve their dreams. So we do this in all ways that we can. Let's say you're an artist based in the Eastern Cape and your music is really, really good, but you don't have the funds to even get you to Johannesburg or yeah. do something of it. Sure. What we can do then is we can shoot a video for you. We'll get there, we'll shoot for you, and then we'll put it out there for you. So, Wait, so you travel from Johannesburg, if they are based in the Eastern Cape, to yeah. have the music video for yeah, them? Yeah, we would shoot it for you, yes. Funded by? Plug City Hype. Plug City Hype will do that for you. Wait, <laughs> this is groundbreaking. 
because you believe in the artist that much, yes. believe in the dream that much, yes. that you take funds, yes. all the money that you can find, yes. and you make sure that a dream gets realized yes. through music. Through music, yes. And that started with um, when I was doing my whole philanthropic journey, yeah. I realized that no man, not everyone is academically inclined. Mm -hmm. What about the young artists who who have talent and who have the hard work, who've put in everything but aren't being recognized? Mm. So I use what I can, we use what we can and we you know, call in some favors here and there, yeah. and then just to make sure that that young person does not take their life. Mm. Because what happens is when they rejected um, because they didn't get accepted in the university to do something, that person now thinks, oh no, I'm not good enough for anything. Yeah, and right. then that contributes to suicide. Mm. So the yes. whole picture of it is to reduce suicide mm. um, within young people because of limited opportunities. Ah. Man, speaking on suicide, and I think it's such a great initiative that you are saying that dreams are valid, yeah. as mm -hmm. irrespectively mm -hmm. of how society deems them in, in, in ranking, but it's still a dream. It's still yeah. something that you were gifted. But you touched on suicide, a very uh, important um, conversation that we need to have as South Africans, a conversation mm -hmm. we need to have as, as ourselves, young people, and mm -hmm. most especially in, in, the, in the entertainment industry. Mm -hmm. In whatever field, you find universities, university students rather, mm -hmm. yeah. committing suicide because mm -hmm. of results. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. what would you say um, could be that thing that we could do? I think there, there's measures that we could put in place. There's something that we could do. Mm -hmm. What would you advocate and say to young people, I guess, today, watching, listening, to parents who, who have children that are going through depression, anxiety? Yeah. What would you say to them? For me, the biggest thing is support. Um, young people need support. Even if you're starting something, we as young people need to support what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't come together mm -hmm. and support what you're doing, you're going to see yourself as some sort of failure, true. which is not true. It's just because people are not supporting you. So to every young person, to every parent um, watching this right now, I'll just say, please support one mm -hmm. another. Support each other's dreams because they're all valid. We yeah. need a bigger entertainment industry. We need all mm -hmm. industries in order to mm -hmm. have a thriving South Africa. We can't True. rely on just the academics True just that. to um, push our economy up. Mm -hmm. South Africa is more than um, that, you know. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure that all areas, we look into them and we support where we can. Mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. Well, take, take me through, what she, she mentioned laws and regulations need to be put in place within our entertainment industry. Yeah. Within music and entertainment as a whole, mm. producers, writers, yeah. um, you guys as rappers on stage, production yeah. team, what, what laws do you think should be put in place mm -hmm. so that we are all in a space where we are regulated by yeah. proper contracts that says you're not in breach of this. If you're not happy with this, mm -hmm. you can still come back and sit down and talk to management. I mean, you yeah. are an independent uh, uh, artist yeah. yourself. Yeah. I mean, when it comes to the art artistry as a musician, um, it gets a bit tricky because there's like different types of musicians, mm -hmm. you know, different artists, different levels. So, I mean, it always comes down to when people are booking you, are they signing the booking contract? You have your terms and conditions there. Are they agreeing to them or not? So I think it also starts from the artist as well. Are you setting up your your organization with the correct terms? Mm -hmm. You know, so you have to look at what you want to be met when you are trying to negotiate with deals and, you know, bookings and the works, you know. Where I would like to touch on is within dancing. You know, as a dancer, I always used to feel like, why is this happening? We're always getting such a low fee, mm -hmm. you know, and then certain dancers are getting such a high fee, you know, and there's a lot of middlemen involved in that in that side of the field. So one thing I would like in terms of like the entertainment side of things, if there was t to be laws and regulations, is like mm -hmm. within the dance dance side of the industry, there could be a, a set fee, you know, a oh, set yes. fee or a minimum wage at least, you know, just so that per, you know, per concert, obviously. Yeah, you know, those type of things because dancers get overlooked. Mm -hmm. They really get overlooked. The amount of hours rehearsing in studio, just trying to make sure the choreography is correct, firstly, yeah. all right, to actually being on stage. That's It's a physical thing, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And Honestly, the hours and that thing, those things cost money. Yeah. You know, traveling to rehearsals every day. You know, traveling to the venue and back. Yeah. You know, eating. just to, eating. You know, <laughs> you your know? general things. And yeah. at the end of the day, you still have to pay rent. You know mm. what I mean? So, uh, I really feel like we should get some form of like structure within that yeah. side of things. Uh, I feel like it's always overlooked. Oh, yeah. man, laws and regulations need to take place. But on a lighter note. 
Jerusalem dance challenge. <laughs> Our president Cyril Ramaphosa came out and said, <laughs> on the 24th, we should all embark on the Jerusalem dance challenge. Are you guys embarking on that? Yes, we have. Um, I have with uh, <laughs> the orphanage children that I was speaking about. Um, I do everything with them that I can. So we did a dance together already. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, so not today. It's been done already. No, it's been mm -hmm. done already before the president. <laughs> <laughs> so you're miles ahead. We're like, President, we got yeah, you. I see you. <laughs> <laughs> and you teach? Uh, I won't lie. I haven't done anything yet. You haven't done anything? I haven't. Um, <laughs> I can't believe I haven't. As a dancer, I must say, Wow. <laughs> and funny enough, I did a dance video on my Instagram this morning. Mm -hmm. You know, I could have just done that. <laughs> <laughs> well, will you be staying with us here at Galaxy because we're also doing our own um, Jerusalem dance challenge. Also. Really? Yeah, we are. Absolutely. We're doing it today. We're doing it today. Okay, then we have a date. Oh, we have a date. <laughs> time. On air. I had to make sure. On air. <laughs> but um, President Siloma Post is going to come out today at 12 and is going to be addressing the nation. Sure. Um, what remarks, what are your thoughts behind it? What do you think is going to say maybe sure i don't know what he's going to it's say it's always unpredictable it really is unpredictable <laughs> but i hope he's doing well because i heard that he was unwell mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. you know being a leader is very difficult sometimes people don't see that you're also giving yourself within mm -hmm. your work um so i really hope that he is doing well and feeling a bit mm -hmm. better i mean with the endless night he's been having exactly. with the COVID 19 yeah. pandemic all the meetings with different countries it must have been That's a lot, lot. Mm. yeah yeah definitely but how has the uh, how has this uh, the pandemic um, the, the culture happening affected you as a dancer? Oh, man, as an artist, really, yeah. like, yo, man, you yo know, man. No, <laughs> no events, you know. Um, it really moved everything to a digital space. Yeah. You know, we had to really try and focus on building a, a brand that allows for, like, you know, campaigns and whatnot to happen. Was that enough, though? I mean, we're looking at, po yeah. I mean, if we're looking at life post COVID 19, you yeah. can do actual stuff on the daily. Now we have COVID-19, rent is still the same thing, oh, food yeah. is still the same thing. Now you're at home. Mm. At least you can stay hungry at an event yeah. because you're working. You know, but now you're at home. The thing is, you know, I, and that's why I say like it was a blessing in disguise, you know, was with COVID, like it hit at the moment my career was starting to take off. So in a sense, I hadn't made a lifestyle that I couldn't afford yet, mm. if you understand what I mean. So with the brand campaigns and everything coming in we were still able to at least you know keep the ball rolling and get things done and continue but it really did affect us man because you know we had so many like events lined up for the year mm. and, and big events you know um and big plans at the same time you know so having to put everything on hold it almost felt like the entertainment industry is being ignored until there's a cure yeah. Basically, because <laughs> I was looking at the regulations and um, the you know how the lockdown levels yeah. mm -hmm. out, and I'm like, no way am I seeing ent entertainment. <laughs> like I'm like, no way. So, yeah. so you know, and um, we really just had to adjust and, and make sure everything moved to the social media space, mm -hmm. um, focused on the streams, make sure the fans are listening to the music yeah. more than anything, um, because you know we will reunite mm -hmm. eventually. I mean, you every artist I mean? went back and started YouTube. It was like yeah. one thing where I saw <laughs> a lot of people started really understanding the power of social media even mm -hmm, more. Mm -hmm. So there's a thing of, I saw the, the Major League DJs coming out with a, a YouTube channel. A yeah. lot of our artists, because of COVID, oh, and I yeah. think w it has taught us something, but it has taken something away yeah. from us at the same time. Yeah. But speaking about technology, you are the Youth uh, National Ambassador, honey. Yeah. Um, take me through your plans, your implementations for the fourth industrial revolution. Okay, so basically, um, you know what the pandemic did? It it shone a light mm. on the inequality that we have in terms of some children aren't able to access devices or they live in an area where there's no network mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so forth. So it brought in in terms of what do we do now because this is where we're headed, yes. the fourth industrial revolution. So what we're going to do is start off with teaching um, basic coding in schools. So make sure that from the, you know, from grade one, mm -hmm. you know, coding you yeah. just know the concept so that when you get to grade 10 you can get a certificate on coding 
So that's basically what we're working on mm. now, making sure that all young people know how to code because we're headed in that direction. Yeah. And it's the only it's the only direction when I'm looking at it because I think as as and I think I want to bring you in here, uh, Titch, because yeah. we're looking at our industry, we're looking at the world as a whole mm. moving into the fourth industrial revolution. Yeah. Everything is technology, cars are technology, laptops sure. are, are technology. Mm -hmm. You speaking to someone is technology because mm -hmm. for you to enter building, there's some gate that you have to go through that mm. is has security. There are a lot of things that you have to um, advance in. So you've mentioned what you are planning, but as an artist, yeah. producing takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. You need computers, you need sound, you need sound engineers, you need a yeah, lot of things. Yeah. What aspects would you say to a young person wanting mm -hmm. to enter within your space? Yeah. What words of advice would you give to them? Because yeah. they're only looking at it as an artist. Yeah, yeah. I just grabbed the mic and I'm just, you know, saying yeah. a few things, uh, spitting out a few bars. This is yeah. what I'm doing. But they're not looking at it as a career. Yeah. Yeah. as the fourth industrial revolution where we are heading yeah. in. I'd say for me, um, I like to tell people that ask me for advice to, to learn the art of doing. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a lot of artists, because you get so much emotionally attached to your product, you know what I mean? And and they'll be talking about plans the whole time, thinking this is what I want to do, this is what I want to do, but, but they don't actually do. Yeah. Um, you know, so I say for me, if anything, it's learn the art of doing, create music, drop it. Mm -hmm. As soon as the music loses its momentum, drop another song, keep dropping music, and, and you'll start to see, like, if you had to do that over and over, within six months, you'll look back and be like, wow, I've actually progressed so much further. And mm. if you haven't progressed, you would have learned why. Mm. You know, you'll look back Either and it's say, it's not just for you. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, maybe it's not for you, or yeah. you'll learn that, okay, actually, this sound isn't for me. Mm. Let me try a different sound, you know? And eventually, it's like going to the gym. You can't go to the gym for a full year, even if you have lazy days mm -hmm. and not have some see results. some results. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get what I mean? Absolutely. You know, and that's exactly what it is. It's just keep perfecting the craft, mm -hmm. keep putting it out there and you know, take it in, yeah. analyze, implement, analyze, implement. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I hear you guys. I'm about to get into <laughs> something very serious. Gender-based okay. violence is a big one in our country. Mm -hmm. As much as we're celebrating, as much as we're celebrating saying mm -hmm. it's Heritage Day, here mm -hmm. we are, others call it Bride Day. But I, I, I've come to notice that even young men the youth particularly are now in this mm -hmm. system, are in this idea, yeah. this mindset of it's okay to hit a woman. It's okay no. to feel that I am worthy. This I deserve. I just want to get your sentiments on that and what would you say because for me it's not even about us really having this conversation uh, what would you say to them probably they're not hearing a harmony yeah. they're not hearing another oh, Ekake was speaking they're not oh. hearing Mzamo speaking yeah. they're not hearing the president speaking but they might hear you yeah. what would you yeah. say to them those young men those young girls that are stuck in relationships even them who can't leave those relationships mm -hmm. because they deem them to be love they deem them to be security mm -hmm. they deem them to be maybe they'll change yeah um, I speak from experience. I lost a friend due to gender-based violence. And, you know, one thing that losing her taught me is that you have to speak up mm. and you have to find healing within yourself. Um, what I've noticed is many of our young boys grow up without fathers. They don't have a role model as to what is a father or a man supposed mm. to look like? What is a good example for that? So for the boys, I ask you to please look within yourself mm. and say that I wouldn't want this to happen to my mom. I wouldn't want this to happen mm. to my sister or daughter. Why yes, would I do mm. it to someone else? And even as young um, girls, please also, Look at your situation, think about your mom, think about your daughter, mm. see yourself in a better place. Even if now in the situation you're not, just say that, okay, I deserve better. I have to leave this relationship yeah. Yeah. for the sake of my life. I may not be happy right now, but doesn't mean that tomorrow I won't be happy. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we have to be brave and we need to see that, okay, I'm the problem when I'm speaking to guys who are, you know, hitting the woman. I'm the problem. Mm. This is not how I can show love. If my dad had to hit my mom, I wouldn't see it as love. Yeah. So just put yourself literally in this, in your um, dad's or mom's shoes mm -hmm. as a third person's perspective. Mm. How would you want to see that, um, you know, relationship mm. working? Yeah, that's mm. my yeah. advice to you. Yeah. Teach. Man, it's like, you know, it's, it's such a, a deep subject, you know. Um, for me, I think if anything, if you're thinking about getting into a relationship, whether you're male or female, learn to love yourself before yeah. you can learn love someone else. Exactly. You know, um, because 
it, it happens in so many different ways. You know, you mm. find people were brought up the wrong way or they had their examples mm. weren't set the correct and that's why, you know, and, and you find that they probably have baggage from the previous relationship that they bring into the new relationship. Yeah. And, you know, that's why for me, I think if everyone can just learn to first start with themselves it's exactly what you're saying internally mm -hmm. your mental health understanding where you are before you share your energy with someone else okay. you know what i mean i think that could at least help um and also you know the noise being made on social media you know yeah. some people would get irritated and say ah I can't stand seeing this all the time but actually that's what's needed yeah. the more light we shed on it the more those that are doing it are going to be scared yeah. to be called out on it you know what i mean okay. and and that could spark a change mm -hmm. you know so we just need to keep shedding light and mm -hmm. and also just practice that you know self-love mm -hmm. and you know <laughs> i love our conversation cool. has been a roller coaster it ride has, of feelings yeah. and you know it's from high points low points Boys, you know <laughs> but um take me through um where, what are you guys doing at this point mm -hmm. quickly like 30 seconds what are you doing currently mm -hmm. and your social media platforms where can they get a hold sure. of you guys Okay, so basically, <laughs> I'm available on Instagram, Twitter at Nosipo Honey, mm -hmm. and what I'm doing now, I'm going to release a documentary, heritage documentary, next week. Super excited for that. And uh, remember, we had a book discussion. Yes. So I'm going to have a new book club. What? Yes, yes. this October mm -hmm. book club is going to be coming soon. A book club <laughs> where you give reviews on books, or no, like an actual book club where we're going to read together oh. and learn and. Awesome. You know, share with feelings. bargain books, right? Yes, with bargain interesting. Books, yeah. Bargain books, we had this conversation. Yes, That's that what <laughs> <laughs> and you teach, um, it's at Costa Titch on all social media platforms, mm -hmm. um, except for Twitter, it's Costa Titch World. Um, and if anything, I'm literally finalizing the album, like mm -hmm. if not today or tomorrow, I'll have the finished product. So within the next two weeks, the album will yeah. be will be out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you have the exclusive <laughs> right here on the Morning Express with myself, Harmony Bailey, and the release date may not be out yet. Yet, but do uh, check him out across every social media platforms where he'll be releasing all brand new content what is what and what is happening within his life but thank you very much for thank joining me so today it has this. been a pleasure the conversation was splendid thank you thank you, thank you so well much. thank you <laughs> <laughs> well we'll be closing off with uh, honey's videos what is um, heritage what do you stem from heritage and it is culture as we celebrate today here is a video see you guys same time, same place, tomorrow morning at 9.30. Let's go. The beauty of South Africa is stretched across the smiles of friendly faces that shine on the mosaic cultures and traditions. Our heritage gracefully spans across our country with rays of Ubuntu. Ubuntu is an African word that means humanity. The values of Ubuntu are acceptance, consideration, appreciation, listening, affection and love.